Hi, my name is Claire and I really like to knit. Recently we've got lots of new subscribers on this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, I am an Australian Chinese knitter here in Australia and I am obsessed about knitting. I've been knitting most of my life. Uh, Mum taught me when I was little and I really took it up during COVID. And in the last four years, I've probably knitted more than 100 pieces. I'd say probably closer to 150. A lot of them are on my Ravelry, but a lot of them weren't because I really only started using it properly in the last year or so. You may see that most of my videos are vlog styles where I take you um, through my journey of casting on a project all the way to the finish line. Recently, I have found it to be a little bit less enjoyable, worrying about having to film the process all the time. And also I've got maybe six whips going at the same time and it's become a little bit unsustainable to do a vlog on each project. So currently we're doing some podcasts and I do have two other vlogs in the process, um, but there may just be a mix of some podcast style and some vlog style. Today, I want to talk to you about speed dating your yarn. This is something that I struggle with all the time and I'm not sure if you do, but you know, I have all of these beautiful yarn and I want to cut it on, but I don't know what to do with them. And I have a lot of patterns that I want to knit, but I don't know which yarn to go with it. And this week I've been doing a bit of speed dating to see if they will match together. And it's probably causing me a little bit of stress. So I'm going to talk about it today and maybe through talking, it will help me clarify my mind, hopefully. Uh, firstly, what I'm wearing today, this is the Rena de Picus. I don't know, don't know how to say it. Rena de Picus by Valentina Bogdanova. I was a test knitter quite a few years ago. Um, and it's just this beautiful design, top down. It looks like little rosebuds here. Uh, there's just a beautiful lace design. And I used the Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the color Sin, or this blood red. And I wear it all the time. I just love it. The design is beautiful. It fits beautifully and it's very comfortable to wear. Um, and I added the frills sleeves myself. So this one you just um, increase every single stitch twice I think and then bind off which creates a beautiful frill sleeve which I think and I think this goes really well with the yoke. Um, okay let's get started. What have I been doing? Let's start with some um, patterns that I want to knit. It's winter here in Australia at the moment but most podcasters are on the north side of the hemisphere and they're knitting up summer projects and of course I've been very tempted I mean here in Queensland most of the year summer anyway so I've been tempted to knit a lot of summer projects so the first thing I've been looking at is a nostalgia top by August Knit it's a free pattern and I've seen a lot of people knit it on Instagram and it calls for a worsted weight she's got merino suggested but as a summer top it really I thought it should be linen or cotton so I tried quite a few swatches in a lot of my recent acquisitions. So the first one I did was this beautiful pink yarn uh, from Woolly Yarns. It is linen, mostly linen, 89% linen, some cotton, silk and sequins. And it is a bulky slash worsted weight, 130 meters per 100 grams. And I only have 200 grams. So I thought this may do. And I did a quick swatch. <laughs> Because of the linen, high linen content, it's so stiff and it came out to be 15 stitches, which is five stitches more per 10 centimeters more than it was called for. And yeah, so that did not work. Then what I do, did was um, found, this is another recent acquisition I talked about in my last video, 100% linen from Woolly Young in a really beautiful slate gray color and so smooth. And I just really wanted to knit with it. So, and this is a light fingering, so I thought I'll use two strands with my swatch. And I started swatching as well. Turns out these Italian linens are also really stiff, especially when held double. So this was about, I think this was about 18 stitches. or seven, I think this was 17 stitches. Again, much too loose, even though it's two strands of fingering, which should work out to be a DK. But because of the stiffness, it's pushing each other apart and quite wide. So if you've seen my videos before, you know I don't enjoy swatching and that's why it's so little. But I didn't like how it felt on my hand. So I quickly give up 
gave up on that one as well. No match. And then I thought, you know, the pattern only calls for 200 grams of DK or 150 grams of fingering weight held double. Maybe I can use some scrappy, scrappy yarn. One of the main things I consider when knitting a project is to use up all the yarn because I hate when there is 100 gram of yarn left. So I think that's one of my holdbacks. I'm always trying to match the yarn exactly to the project so there is no wastage. It probably would be better if I buy the yarn for the project. Of course, as knitters, you know that doesn't happen. You see the yarn, you love it, you buy it. Anyway, so I thought 150 grams of fingering, I can use some of my scrappy yarns, you know, the leftover yarns, and um, I found these. So this is uh, this is Roto China by Fiberco. I used in, recently my Knitting Queen top, which you can see, which I will link down below. It's a beautiful combination of llama and silk and alpaca and a bunch of other stuff. And it's really drapey. Um, and I have 160 grams of it left, which is a little bit too much for my liking. And then I also have a bit of leftover of this pure cashmere left from my Japanese lace dress, also linked below. And I had about 70 grams of it. And I thought maybe that'll add up to 150 and I'll hold them double to make my DK. Nostalgia. So I started knitting on it. I did the eye cord cast on. I did the lace. And I didn't, what I didn't anticipate was how fuzzy this is turning out. It's actually a really thick and warm fabric, like a winter jumper. Nothing like the summery design at all. Um, and now that I've finished the body, I've started on the straps. I don't know if this is enough to finish the straps. So I'm stuck. I'm stuck right now. I don't know whether I should continue or not because it's a summer top design with a thick yarn. It's not working. Yeah, so if you have any suggestions, let me know, but I'm currently stuck. I don't know if I should finish it or not because I don't think there's enough yarn and I don't know if I'll wear it. One fail. Okay, I've just almost finished one strap and I'm trying it on for the first time and <laughs> it's very short and I don't. I probably have enough yarn to finish the straps, but it's way too short and it's really thick and warm. So definitely mismatch with the yarn and the design and I'm going to have to unravel this. I think it's still a beautiful yarn, great color. Maybe I'll just unravel and make a beanie later. Yeah, that's the only thing I can do with it. Okay, so I'll unravel this, make a beanie and then find another yarn for this. Or maybe I should just work on one of my other 50 whips. And then the next one um, that I really, next pattern that I really wanted to knit that I was trying to find the perfect yarn for was the Summer Love Dress um, by Drops. So it's on the Drops website. It's a free pattern and it called for 680, mil, mil, 680 meters of their Bolmolin linen, which is a worsted weight linen. I didn't want to, I saw this dress on their website and I really wanted to make it, but I didn't want to go and order yarn because um, to order drops, we have to get it from Wool Warehousing England. And I know that if I go on the website, I'll end up ordering a few more things. And that already happened to me in my last video where I accidentally ordered six yarns that I didn't need. So I'm trying to avoid ordering it. And I thought I'll go into my stash and try to find something that will match. It is a 15 stitch gauge, so I thought maybe I'll hold a couple of my new linens together. Um, that'll work. And then I found in my stash this Prosper yarn. What's it called? It's a Prosper yarn, New Zealand yarn that's merino, yak, and silk. It's really drapey in like a denim blue color. I've got 300 grams of this, which is more than all the dress needs. Um, and I've got this new Woolly Yarns linen with Lurex that I also ordered in my last video, no, the video before. And I've got quite a bit of this, 420 grams, and it is gorgeous. I've had a very similar color in a mohair recently, which I used to knit my Amy, my Amy pullover. I'll link it down below as well. And the color is just exquisite. So I ordered this in the linen. And then I thought, okay, if I hold two strands of this and one strand of this, that'll make 
a worsted and that might that that'll probably work for this summer love dress and I started swatching but this is the initial swatch uh, I use one two three four five six millimeter needle on that so I did pearl bumps to try and remember what the um, needle I used was and then I thought it was a little bit too loose I didn't really want to because it's a dress I don't want my undies to show through so this is a little bit too loose then I changed down to a five millimeter needle and the gauge is a lot better and it's got a nice enough drape but I wasn't loving the color I think this is a beautiful denim blue this is a beautiful navy blue but together it just looks a little bit dirty I don't know is this a nice color because I usually like very bold high contrast colors if you can't tell from all of my whips and finished objects on my Ravelry page and this is a little bit melange and it's not it's not it's not a strong enough contrast for me and I just wasn't loving it I guess mm, I'm not sure so then I thought okay maybe if I'll swap out one strand of this for a darker blue so I pulled out my navy silk I've only got 150 gram of this it's a from woolly yarns light fingering I order in my last video you can see and it's this beautiful smooth silk and it's darker so maybe these three together it'll create better color for me and I only knit up a little bit here but still this is um I'm not loving it it's just just this little bit here so right now this is an abandoned match I tried to find the perfect match for the for the pattern and the yarn but it has not worked out and another reason is I don't I got 420 grams of this 300 grams of this I'm gonna have heaps of leftovers if I use this to make my summer love dress so yeah these are now abandoned and then maybe something will come to me one day an idea will come to me but not right now the third pattern I'm trying to match a yarn for that I really want to knit is the Ilana Camisole by Masha Ziblikova. Um, she is known as Not A Day Without Knitting on Instagram. I recently test knitted her pattern, so she's gifted me Ilana Camisole, which is really popular, I think, on Instagram. And I really want to knit it. It only calls for 330 meters of fingering, which is not a lot. It's less than 100 grams in my size. So again, I didn't want to break into a ball of yarn that's more than 100 grams and waste the rest of it. Because it would have been perfect for this linen. It would be perfect for this silk, right? However, I've got 150 grams of each of these and there's going to be a whole 80 gram left over if I use these. So I'm trying to think of something else to knit with it. And um, I've got a lot of linen quills left, um, barely broken into after making my neon corbis. But I think the Ilana is just such a beautiful and classic muted design. Well, all the samples that other people have knitted are muted colors, and my linen quills are bright neons. And I don't think it will look very classy. So, what do I do? I'm not sure. I've got a 50. I've got about 70 grams of um, knitting for olive merino left but I don't want to start and it's not enough yarn. So I'm still trying to find a perfect match for that, dating all of my yarns and making swatches. Um, you know, this is another one I got in my last video that's absolutely beautiful. It's 80% linen with a bit of silk, cotton and lyrics. But I've got 300 grams of this, which again I don't want to waste um, um, using a little bit and then having some left after three failed matches this one i have found the perfect pattern match well i found the pattern and i found the yarn and it was the perfect match and that is the moon glow tea uh, a brand new design by sanetti knits she um, posted about it on her instagram while she was creating the design and i already loved it so when she released the pattern i bought it straight away it calls for DK weight or two strands of fingering. So two strands of fingering. Um, her design also had a bit of lyrics in it. So this is a beautiful linen with a little bit of lyrics with two strands. I'm sure this is gonna be a beautiful top. It is um, full on cable with a little bit of 
and the cable actually does the shaping for the neck apparently so this will be my next cast on for sure so after three failed attempts at least i have one good match although i haven't swatched for it yet so fingers crossed touch wood this is going to be a good match oh, i just had an idea because yesterday while i was going through my wardrobe i found this old thing i crocheted and this yarn is a polyester beautiful polyester sequin yarn um, a family friend got for me from Japan and back then I wasn't serious about knitting so I just crocheted this thing which obviously I never wore because I have no idea how to wear something like this maybe I can unravel this and use this to make the Ilana camisole but I have no idea I really should weigh this because it's probably not going to be enough yeah anyway that's one idea so I'm going to unravel this and speed this speed date this as well I think so that was trying to speed match speed day my patterns but I also I also have so many beautiful yarns that I love that I want to knit and I've been trying to um, find a design for them so the first one here is this beautiful peach Melba it's called peach, the color is called peach Melba it's mohair alpaca merino polyamide and a little bit of sequins from Woolly Yarns of course at 400 grams and I think it's a DK it's 300 meters per 100 grams so yeah around a DK and I've got this inspiration like the top will be a little t-shirt and the bottom will be a pleated skirt inspired by Lark Bagger Lark Bagger um, and I started swatching the five millimeter needle created a fabric that was much too loose no structure four and a half a little bit better let's see here so I use pearl bumps to um, indicate what needle size I used because I always forget but the four millimeter created the best fabric it was just perfect so I would say this is probably more a DK weight of mohair and um, so I've been thinking about casting this on to make the dress that I had in mind but uh, I don't think it's gonna work firstly Using a four millimeter needle will use up a lot more yarn. So I'm not sure if this will be enough to make a dress. Secondly, if I make a fuzzy dress that's short sleeved, when would I wear it? It's too mid season and I probably won't get to wear it a lot. And thirdly, I put this to my face, it's actually really scratchy. So I've kind of half fallen out of love with this yarn, even though it's a beautiful color. I love pastels, neons and high trunk high contrast colors even though I love this color I don't love the mohair on my skin so yes bye bye it's gonna sit on the side for a while and then the next yarn that I really really want to knit is the pink which I just talked about before this pink sequins linen only have 200 grams so maybe I will make I'm thinking I can probably still make the nostalgia top work using this I just have to do some maths because um, it's a very structured top and if I just do some maths to change the gauge do less pattern repeats it probably will will work um, the only thing I'm thinking of doing is not doing the eye cords and I'm just gonna do a garter stitch edge for the bottom hem instead of the eye cord which will still work if you like shape it and I probably won't do eye cords here so I'm going to do some mats and then hopefully the nostalgia top will work with this. We'll see. And then of course, I really want to make something with this straight away. This is the blue silk in a light fingering that has failed from my blue summer love top, summer love dress that's over there. And it's 490 meters per 100 grams, which is a light fingering. I have 150 grams of this. I think I'll make a summer t-shirt. There are so many summer t-shirt patterns out there. They all look very similar. And I'm sure I can just pull out one of my older patterns or use one of my knitting instruction books and create a simple design. So I've started an inspo board. And if you have any suggestions for this, please let me know because I would love to have a navy summer tee that will match everything. So that's all of my dating. Most of them fails. This one maybe will work. But really, I have been work knitting on this for the last week and there is no result. Maybe this one, but will it be a success? I feel like I have wasted all this time swatching, pulling it out, trying different things, but I haven't decided on anything I'm going to knit on yet, which is sad.
I do have one success story though, and that is this orange top that I made last week. This only took me five days and I ripped it out, I don't know, maybe 50 times. So this is um, one of the yarns that I got last week from Woolly Yarns and it's a beautiful orange white cotton with white sequins. 95% cotton and 5% silk actually. I just loved everything about it. It's so summery, so fun and I had to cast on straight away. So I just drafted something up myself. So I started in the back and cast on for the shoulder and I did an English design. English, I think it's called English tailoring with a sloped shoulder. So just cast on and do increases through there which creates a bit of a trapezoid shape um, and I knitted it down to the armhole with some increases. Instead of doing an edging and then having to pick up later, I just the last two stitches, I did a slip stitch, which became almost like a little eye cord, which curls in on itself. See, so you stitch in here, stitch in here. You don't even have to finish it, because it's done. And then I pick up for the front panel, pick up left shoulder, pick up right shoulder, and then did a little tab on the shoulder. Came to the front, start increasing and increasing here. Again, using the two slip stitches on the edges, so that I don't have to pick up for the edges later. Then I increase all the way to the armhole, join it, knit it together down in the round and then I finish it off with a split hem and the back is two rows longer than the front. And it's gorgeous. So easy to make and I love it. I haven't taken any photos of myself wearing it yet because it's still a little bit cold and um, I haven't washed it. So the few issues that came out after this, firstly you can see it's extremely twisted. I've heard a lot about this, um, when you knit something in the round, it can become twisted. But most of the time I knit with wool and alpaca and they're very stretchy, so it's not an issue. But in cotton, you can really see that twist. Even when I'm wearing it, it just twists like that. So I definitely need to wash it and then try and pull it into shape. And I haven't done that yet because I've been lazy. And ideally, fingers crossed, that will work. I think it will because it's heavy and strapey so if I just wash it and pull it that way it should be fine. Now knitting from here down was really really easy. Knitting from the top down I had so many issues. Firstly as you can guess I didn't do a big enough swatch so the mat was wrong and I had to unpick the back and redo it. The first one was much too big so this one I had to unpick maybe three times to get the right number of cast on. And once I got down to here, I got my gauge bang on, and it was all good. Um, and then next, when I pick up for the front, I didn't account for this width enough. So I started my neck increases much too early, and it was um, it ended up looking like this, which was a little bit ugly. So I had to unpick the front. They were, I think they were up to here already, and I had to unpick the whole thing. And it's eight centimeters of shoulder from here to here, that's just straight, before I started my neck increases. And now that looks a lot better. However, again, when I got down to here, I realized the straps were just a little bit too narrow. Um, and the reason is, I did do my math right, but I didn't account for the eye cord edging that I integrated in. Because when you do a curled up edging, I actually take away about two stitches because it curls in. Which made, the, which made the shoulder too narrow. And I wanted like a singlet, not a singlet. I wanted a nice top with a white-ish shoulder line. So again, I unpicked it and just did a, picked up a couple more stitches in the back to give me a wide enough shoulder. When I got to the front, I think I did my mats wrong a few times and then had to unpick quite a few more times just to get the front right. But now that I have got this all written down, I can make another one easily. Um, with all the mats already done. And potentially I can use this pink to make this design. Yeah, which will be really nice as well because it's such a beautiful yarn, it doesn't really need a complicated design. This yarn was also a bit of an issue. Woolly yarn products, they're not very twisted. So I don't know if you can see this. It's got a strand of a cotton slubby orangey thread, it's thicker. It's got a very thin strand of an orange nylon maybe that the sequence is on. And then it's got, no, it's got an orangey silk 
twist it through it. And then it's got a dark orange strand, cotton strand, which the um, sequence sits on. Next, we have this cotton twist, which is, I don't know, maybe 10 strands of cotton. So altogether, this creates this beautiful yarn. However, knitting with it, oh, it kept splitting. The amount of splitting that has happened, which you can see here and here, um, sometimes the sequence gets caught and then one of the loops get pulled longer. It was a little bit difficult and I had to concentrate so I don't split the yarn. And um, unpicking wasn't fun either because of the sequence. The sequence will get stuck on a loop and I will yank and then it'll create a pull. Ah, so I had to unpick very, very slowly. Um, but overall, I love it. I really like it. Hopefully once I wash it, it will look better. And I still have this much left. I was a little bit worried when I got to the bottom. Still have quite a bit left. What can I make with this? Maybe I'll add it to my scrappy blanket. But yeah, I just hate wasting yarn. There's so much left. What do I do with it? Really happy with this one. This is my only FO from... Well, I knitted it in five days, but really it could have been dying too if I didn't rip it back so many times. Um, I also made a few other little things, which I'll insert into a bureau here. But <laughs> last week I got a sudden burst of inspiration and I went and made a whole bunch of stitch markers. Um, my mother-in-law was really into beading and I had a few bursts of beading obsession as well. So we have a lot of supplies at home and my mother-in-law's got boxes and boxes of crystals, Swarovski crystals. So I used it and I made these cute little stitch markers and they just make me so happy because they're so pretty. When you're knitting with beautiful yarn and cute tools, it just makes the experience so much better. Now, I don't know if you want to whip update. I haven't made much progress on my three Japanese lace patterns. This one, I haven't made any progress. Like I mentioned last video, I'm not touching it because I'm not enjoying it right now. This one, I'm actually making quite a bit of progress. This is called the Precious Knit Pullover. And um, it's only an eight stitch lace repeat. So this is my TV knitting when I'm and I on the TV don't want to concentrate too much. So this is slowly progressing along. I think I've maybe made five centimeters. It's also my car knitting if I'm waiting in the car for my son. Um, the gray one, I think this is the a Lacey Aaron pullover. Oh, these are both by Hitomi Shida. I think I've made, how much progress? I've knitted about two centimeters. This is another one I made. Yeah, I've only knit about two centimeters. This requires too much concentration and I haven't, I've been distracted with all of my speed dating. Another one I've made heaps of progress on was, um, I mentioned it briefly last week, is this cashmere cardigan I'm making for my friend. My friend lives overseas and she's got this favorite cardigan that she bought from a store, but the fabric, it was polyester. It was starting to really deteriorate after her last dry clean. So she asked me if I can make one for her. And I've found a really close color match. So this is the cardigan, and this is the young, this is the young I found on woollyyoung.com. So similar. So I started, and um, I thought it would, be a, it would be a great challenge trying to replicate this cardigan. Now I am making a vlog about this, so I won't talk about it too much, but I have finished one of the front pieces, quite a bit of ripping back, and I've started on the second front piece, almost no ripping back now. However, I realized I don't have enough yarn, so I have ordered more yarn from woollyyarn.com. Initially I got 350 grams, which is usually enough for a jumper for me. But they call this a super cash, so it may be a, su so it may be a super wash cashmere. And as you know, superwash yarns are very smooth and slippery and there is no um, halo to it at all. So to get the gauge, I had to hold four strands of this. So it's used up so much yarn. So I've ordered another 350 grams, which I think is what it takes to create this cardigan. Insane. It's going to be so heavy, but the yarn is so soft and um, I really like touching it. And this is looking really nice, but to know the details, you have to watch my vlog once it's finished. And lastly, another whip in progress, not quite, is my Corbis top. I had started it and um, that was my whip that was stolen. Mum saw it, she liked it, she's taken it home and she's unraveled half of it and she's knitting on it. It's been 
week and a half, and I thought she would have made a lot more progress on it. But I saw her last night, and she's only just finished the body and re knit the neckline because she didn't like my neckline. She said it was sloppy, and she hasn't even started on the sleeves yet. So it may be another few more weeks before I can report back on it. Um, but another thing is the yarn that's used in the corbis is absolutely beautiful. So I'm hoping she'll have some left. Maybe I can use that to make the Ilana Kami. I don't think there'll be enough left because now she's changed it to her size. But you know, that's the things I'm always thinking about. How can I maximize my yarn? So there is nothing left. Do you think about your yarn like that? Now I have a table full of yarn and tangled swatches. We've come to the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed my long ramble and you are inspired by some of these beautiful yarns or the patterns that I have talked about. And if you have any ideas on how to reduce yarn wastage or what I can do with some of these beautiful yarns that I want to use, please let me know. I hope you enjoy the video, subscribe and like, and I will come back with another, with another ramble very soon. Hopefully with a couple more FOs or give you an update on my Corbis and my green cardigan. My son had book week coming up and he is currently obsessed with anime and he wanted to go as Chopper, a little reindeer from One Piece. And we couldn't get a costume, I didn't really want to overpay for a polyester costume online. So we went to um, Kmart, bought him a white shirt, a yellow shirt, and asked his tailor grandmother to make a stripy shirt for him. Luckily his grandmother has had an alterations business for 23 years, so she quickly whipped it up. Um, Ollie helped a little bit and he bought a hat online, painted his little nose blue and I think he makes a pretty good chopper. What do you think?